Welcome to Book to Where Two Guys Tell You About the Books They're Reading. I'm Rob Olson. And I'm Livia Snedden. Uh, for this episode, I would like to amend that, Rob. It's uh, where two guys talk about books. This oh, is our second yeah. in a row, which makes hey, me feel terrible about myself. At least we'll talk about books this time. I don't think we really did that much last episode, right? <laughs> no, we didn't. A lot of Kip Winger. Way more Kip Winger than I was expecting. <sighs> Yeah, I got a, I don't know, a, a notice to appear. I don't know what that means. I have to show up somewhere <laughs> Uh-oh. relating to episode four. Was it 420? 422? 422, yeah. Yeah. So I don't know what that's all about. But, hey, uh, at least you, you know, got a notice. Someone before. just threw a black bag over my head and threw me in the back of a <laughs> fucking Crown Victoria. Nice. Listen, some people, that's their thing, Rob. You should... Uh, <laughs> You yeah, should uh, embrace that a little bit. Nothing to do with the government. It was just a kink. So I know we had no real format um, last week. Uh, we're going to do a little better this week. So it's coming up on the end of the year. Right, Rob? We're what? I mean, recording I'm, this yes. 26 days out from, from the end of the year. And we've got a pretty busy schedule for the rest of the year because we have our Patreon, uh, Patreon, Patreon, Patreon pick with Misty Bennett coming up next week. I know we're going to review Les Edgerton's memoir. We're going to have a holiday episode. So now is probably a good time to talk about lists, right? All the end of the year lists are coming yeah. out, which has got to piss people off that are like putting something, a movie, a book or whatever, like out like next week because all the lists are done already. <laughs> but so Rob has compiled some lists to talk about, but I came across a list that really, God damn it. There's a stark contrast do you, do you remember probably five years ago, four years ago, there was the meme. There was like what people think I do, yeah, yep, what, yep. you know, like what my parents think I do, you know, and then what I actually do. So we know what we actually do, which is we read a book that we pick based on the fact that it sounds like it might be fun. And then we vaguely talk about it for a little bit. We give it our our, uh, our stamp of approval or not via stars um, that we're not qualified to give. And then we talk about weird shit like Kip Winger songs or, uh, or the the um, rock anthems of pedophiles or whatever. So that's our shtick. Mm-hmm. I came across uh, completely unrelated because Rob put together the lists. Uh, the New York Times, they're they're big, right? They're a newspaper. Yeah, one of those yeah. Uh, news outlets. Yeah. Yeah, but um, what are they best known for? Let's be honest. What are they best known for? They're the uh, like their bestseller book book list, right? Well, pro- yeah, probably the crossword puzzle and then. Oh second. yeah, yeah. The, their, their book or the the now you've got me i knew exactly what it was called the new york times bestseller lists i say lists because there's the fiction and the non-fiction yeah so this is a, a list it's their critics top choices and i was i said i gotta look and i thought not only have we not read one goddamn <laughs> book from here i don't recognize one name of an author one title of a book yeah Nothing, which isn't true. Dennis Johnson is on there, who I did read um, Jesus' Son 20-something years ago when it came out. But um, I was looking at this, and I thought, God damn it. When I tell people I review books, they must picture that this is this is what I'm, I'm reviewing. Like, A Life of My Own by Claire Tomalin, hmm. you know, or something like that. And, and it's so different from what we actually do. Very, yeah, very. Well, I mean, and that's our running joke, like... I wonder how <laughs> I wonder how many of the the books on that list are sitting in a pile like on my shelf, you know, that got sent to us that we yeah never even think to look at. Yeah, but I uh, I picture now I, I'm going to think every time I talk to like one of my coworkers because the the ones there's a few that know I do a podcast. They're like, oh, how's the podcast going? And now in my mind, I will be unable to disassociate this list <laughs> from what they think I spend my time doing. If that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and then whenever you tell someone you review books, it leads to the inevitable, like, they talk about the books that they're aware of. And yeah, then the there's, they read, yeah. And then they're surprised when you haven't read it or heard of it. And it's like, do you know how many books come out, like, on a monthly basis? Like, hundreds. Oh, like, if you've ever looked, there are times where I've gotten, like, um, you know, I'm trying to find the next book for us, next yeah. in, you know, quotation marks, so something over the next couple of weeks, and I go to, like, the new and future releases on Amazon. Yeah. It's, like, 70 pages long. Yeah, there's no way that we could be aware yeah. of all the books. Or but, would uh, want to be aware of all the yeah. books. I mean, we really could have read The Tangled Tree, A Radical New History of Life by David Quammen. 
that's something we could have we could have reviewed, right? That could have happened. It could have happened. So, at mm-hmm. any rate, I, I thought it was kind of funny that uh, next time somebody tells me what I'm reading for the podcast, oh, what are you guys reviewing for the podcast? I'm going to say The War Before the War, Fugitive Slaves and the Struggle for America's Soul <laughs> from the Revolution to the Civil War by Andrew Del Blanco. Have you heard of it? I think so. I think I heard I think I heard of someone talking heard, about it. I heard that was really good. You know. Um, so, do you think the same holds true for like the podcaster side of things? Like, someone's idea of what doing a podcast is is different than what we do, or are we pretty on oh. solid ground there? Oh, where, where you mean where they think it's like preparation and like we're in the same room and there's like yeah. professional equipment and I'm not scrolling through social media the whole time you're talking? Yeah, it's probably a little different from what they from what they think. Maybe even from what you think. Yeah, like they think I'm wearing pants. Right? Yeah. (laughs) For the record, I'm wearing pants. Um, I am too. It's too cold not to wear pants, man. It's just the fucking winter. Yeah, Yeah. you make a good point. And uh, that becomes very, um, in in the few times that we've bumped into like other people who do coverage of books as opposed to just actually making books, like the conversation is always a little bit, I, I feel like I have more to say to an author than to someone else who does book coverage. Hmm. That's interesting. Who's that? I don't know. You probably you probably haven't really thought about it, but I don't want to talk to a fucking book reviewer what I'm going to say. Yeah, if you don't read the same books. I, no, I think at this point it might be fun to talk to another book reviewer. Um, not like ongoing or whatever, but it might be fun to compare a little bit of notes about like the approach and stuff, stuff that I'm sure is fascinating for people that are listening right now. Like, Hey, how do you take, you know, how do you annotate shit? I don't know. Like, what do you, yeah. Well, yeah. Or, you know, um, so uh, you and I have this conversation a lot, right. But like the kind of open ending to a book, Mm. you know, like Mm -hmm. someone else who does this and, the vast majority of people who read a book, read a book, and they're done with it. And they probably never talk to anyone about it or, or whatever. There's not a lot of discussion. So it'd be interesting to see um, reading a book, knowing that you're going to be critical, is definitely reading different yeah. than when I was reading just because I enjoyed reading. That's fair. Yeah, and I guess I wonder if someone who's going to write about a book they read is different than someone who's just going to have a discussion. Because, like... If you think about it, if you're just the only person that's talking about this, you maybe need to have a clearer idea of what's going on than, like, there's so many times that you make me think about something I never thought of. Mm-hmm. And so, like, my idea is is kind of informed by your opinion. So, I guess, yeah, maybe that would sure. be interesting. Yeah. Well, um, we're not we're not suggesting you contact us to do that or anything. Yeah. No. <laughs> we're just saying it might be interesting. That's all. <laughs> so, I don't want to put the wrong idea yeah. out there. Other book reviewers. Yeah, let's not go crazy. So Rob did come up with a couple of very interesting lists, which really kind of fit more of our wheelhouse. So um, these are uh, like user voted lists. Mm -hmm. So it's also tough, right? Because user voted lists um, can become a popularity contest. I mean, it's exactly a popularity contest. (laughs) Well, but it also could just be like the recognizable name or people vote and they're like, oh, I didn't read this book by Stephen King. But, you know. Or uh, someone I'm just clicking around. Yeah, someone just has a better social media presence and they get the word out. Yeah, for sure there's that too. Mm-hmm. Um so but uh so I want to go over some of these lists if you don't mind. Yeah, yeah. I want to start with the best horror list. So these are a good the uh, Goodreads list. It's the tenth annual Goodreads Choice Awards. I'm glad you chose that one because that's the link I already have open. <laughs> I will say that um so I first page, I guess there's only one page. We have read what I'm going to consider to be an alarming number of the books on this <laughs> list, right? Yeah. So from bottom to top um, on this list, we read uh, We Sold Our Souls by Grady Hendrix. We, of course, read The Cabin at the End of the World by Paul Tremblay, as we do all Paul Tremblay past and future full-length novels. Um, Dracul by Doc Ray Stoker and J.D. Barker. Baby Teeth by Zoya Stage, who actually joined us on the podcast um, just, a, just a couple months ago. Yeah. And we read all of those, man. But yeah. none of those won. Not one of them won. Yeah, but they're top ten. They totally are. Top but nine. the winner was a Stephen King book. Yeah. By a lot. By almost double um, the votes that Zoya Stage got. 
Um, I have to get, yeah, um, I, I kind of watch this unfold. I, I follow uh, Zoya on Instagram, and so she was posting a lot about, like, you know, the the process of the votes. And, like, because it wasn't just, like, like, you see the total. Like, you could see the books, like, climbing the ranks as it went on, I guess. And um, so she was kind of tr- tracking her progress. And um, I don't even know where I was going with that. But it was um, happy for her. She, you know, this is her debut novel. And um, e- even though King doubles her vote total, she's she's got an easy over almost 6,000 vote um, lead over the the third the third place, Dracul. Mm-hmm. So that's pretty freaking great. I um, this is <laughs> this is the only one I voted in this year, by the way. Oh, I didn't I didn't vote. E- I voted and I voted for Zoya. Yeah. Hey. You, Otherwise, you, she would have had twenty thousand four hundred twenty-two votes. So correct. Uh, and I, I'm just, you know, full honesty. I enjoyed all of the books that we read on this list. Um, but as I told you before, Baby Teeth was my favorite book we'd read this year, and, and I, that nobody has broken that yet. It's coming up on the end of the year. I don't think it's going to happen. That might be my favorite book of twenty um, twenty eighteen. I just thought. Tell me what you think about this. It would be interesting to see the number of votes for the book um, compared to the number of reviews they have. So like uh, proportionality kind of thing, like you you weigh the votes based on, so like if baby teeth has half as many reviews on Goodreads, uh, then like elevation, it's almost like she got the same number of votes. You know what I'm saying? All right. So interestingly enough, um, you brought up great points. Stephen King had 50,000 Oh, I'm mm-hmm. sorry, what was it? Was it 50,000? Uh, the votes, 39,616. 39,000. Um, there are 700 reviews on, on Amazon. And that's why I said, I wonder how much this is a popularity contest and less of an actual voting. Like, I read yeah. this book, so I think this book is good. The other problem is, how many people do you realistically think read um, six of those books to vote between them? Oh God! Almost that makes sense, yeah. right? Yeah, we're probably the uh, best, uh, you know, uh, mm-hmm. best voters of all of anybody. Um, Baby Teeth has six hundred and eighty reviews, so um, those are pretty close. Seven, whatever I said, and then six eighty. So they're definitely not a two to one ratio. No, and looking on Goodreads, like if you hover over the book cover, it'll show you mm-hmm. how many ratings they got on Goodreads. Oh, gotcha. King's got thirteen thousand six seventy six. And Zoya's got twelve thousand nine thirty, so they're almost like neck and neck as far as like how many ratings. So I guess that would, yeah, that throws my idea out the window. Yeah, and like I said, I think a lot of that is people are just clicking through and they're like, "Oh, I like Stephen King stuff." Just click. It's yeah. funny that there's so many more votes than ratings. <laughs> Stephen King's got like twenty six thousand more votes than he does. Uh, ratings for the book. Mm-hmm. Mm. Yep. Yeah. At any rate, he's also a uh, book. Flight or fright is flight or fright is edited by him and Bev Vincent. So that would be in the what is that twelve spot, ten spot. Oh, I didn't see that. Which arguably might also mean it just said Stephen King on it because that got yeah. five thousand votes. Yeah. <laughs> so anyway. Um, this is definitely not scientific. I mean, I, I almost want to give it uh, to the New York Times critics because at least they're critics. I'm going to assume they read those books before they criticized, right? which is what critics do, right? Did you want to move on to the second category? Uh, yes. Um, there's not as much in this one. Not as much to talk about in this one, I don't believe. So best mystery and thriller um, we, uh, we also read. Well, from this one, it looks like just the two, right? Yeah. The two. So from this one, we read uh, the Bill Clinton and James Patterson. The president is missing. Mm-hmm. And the woman in the window. Also the second place um, contender uh, by A.J. Finn, which I enjoyed um, a lot, if I remember correctly. It's certainly a lot more than the president is missing. Second place again to Stephen King. And if yeah. you're in a category with that guy, second place is basically winning. Yeah. So, um, but a, a lot tighter vote count there. Sixty-two thousand votes for the outsider, which is a mystery and thriller, apparently not horror, and then fifty-five thousand votes for the woman in the window. Yeah. So, 
Interesting on this list, Livius, The Wife Between Us, which is the fourth spot, is a book that's co-written by Greer Hendricks and Sarah Pekinen. I Pekinen? thought that looked familiar. We're reviewing a book by them in January, I believe. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. So I they, they sent us review copies of a different book that we're going to be reviewing, but they also included The Wife Between Us. So a copy of that is sitting on my bookshelf. Yeah. Um, by the way, I don't know if you read this, but the outside. So uh, Stephen King also won this category in 2016 with End of the Watch and 2014 with Mr. Mercedes. So I'm guessing in 2017, he didn't have a book out. That's got to be. Yeah, <laughs> that's, that's what it sounds like to me. So anyway, <laughs> um, but speaking of Stephen King, before we continue on with this, I just saw that the sequel to The Shining. Dr. Um, which Sleep. We, Dr. Sleep. I don't think that's the name it's going to get, but a story about an adult, whatever that kid's name was. Danny Torrance? Him? Danny. Danny Torrance, yeah. I'm the, I'm the guy that hates Stephen King. Why do I know all this? Um, I, I mean, I read The Shining before we read that book, just so right. I had the back, like, you know, I've not been a long-time Shining fan. Um, is a going to be a movie made by the people who made The Haunting of Hill House? Oh, good. Yeah. So I, I thought like you him. might be excited. Yeah, yeah they, they did a good job. So uh, obviously anything based on the book that we've read, I'm thinking we're going to watch and probably talk about on the podcast. So I'm guessing yeah. that's, I mean, that was like just kind of announced. So I'm assuming that's probably late 19, early 2020. Hey, I don't think it's going to be a time soon. I'm still waiting for the movie adaptation of Robopocalypse by uh, <laughs> that one guy, yeah. Daniel H. Wilson or whatever. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. I was going to say something. I was going to say you were waiting for a different movie adaptation. <laughs> I was going through the list of the terrible things that I could say, like backdooring the brat, maybe. Or, oh, I've, uh, seen, I've seen the movie adaptation of that. <laughs> oh, God. All right. Uh, tune in next week for, our, for Rob, Rob's review of backdooring the brat. Was it a full-length movie or was it like 12 minutes? It was a clip. On it was a clip. Something, yeah. yeah. Some kind of tube you found online. <laughs> um. So, yeah, best mystery and thriller. All right, so no surprises there, right? Stephen King, Stephen King, some books that we've read. So clearly we're more Goodreads than we are New York Times, right? Uh, So far, yeah, yeah. There is a third awards list that was put out (laughs) by The Guardian. And, um, again, I I don't believe Rob picked these because there was specifically anything, you know, that we read or reviewed on there. But this is the Bad Sex Award for 2018. So these are bad sex scenes. So this is a negative award, right? This is like the the Razzies. No, is yeah, that what it's uh, called? Yeah, I think it's the Razzies. Yeah, it's a it's a bad award. So so I look at this and go, oh, this might be fun. And I'm thinking, I don't think we read anything on here. Boom, the very first one, right? I, I'm sorry, the second one. Yeah, Katarina by James Frey, which I also enjoyed. So what I thought would be fun is if Rob reads some of these. Of course, you're going to make me read it. Uh, you want me to go right to the Katarina by James Frey? Because that was the, the one, winner. It's the one we're most familiar with. No, is it the winner at the bottom? Is there a winner? I guess I didn't scroll all the way down. Well, it's kind of strange. So the Guardian is uh, reporting on the list from uh, a website called Literary Review. The Guardian. So the, the way the Guardian's article is laid out has the excerpts better. But um, I will read James Frey won the 26th annual Literary Review Bad Sex and Fiction Award for Katarina. So, yeah, he did win it. Four, I'm just going to go right to the the winner. You want me to read the whole excerpt? You should, yes. All right. I might have to put some, like, porno music under this. And if I'm really feeling, it's not going to happen. You have a a playlist, right? Your Apple Music, there's just a porn music playlist. Yeah. All right, get ready. This is going to get, this is going to get intense real fast. I'm hard and deep inside her, f- <laughs> fucking her around the bathroom sink, her tight little black dress still on. You, I th- Didn't you, like, call this scene out? No, no, no. I was thinking something else. Never mind. Uh, her tight little black dress still on, her thong on the floor, my pants at my knees, our eyes locked, our hearts and souls and bodies locked. Come All right, in- ladies. <laughs> ladies, get ready. Here's, here's where it gets real serious. Come inside me. Come inside me. Come inside me. Blinding, breathless, shaking, overwhelming, exploding, white god. I come inside her, my cock throbbing. We're both moaning. Eyes, hearts, souls, bodies, one. One. White. 
God, <laughs> come, come, come. I close my eyes, let out my breath, come. Now, you may be thinking to yourself, wow, that was just awful. The most awful thing about this is that in that entire thing that Rob just read, there's one fucking comma. Yeah. I, I really placed, added punctuation. Just, yeah. Yeah. No, it's placed properly, but like of all the places you could, that's the one place that he decided we needed a comma. <sighs> I liked Katarina. I did. Now, the Haruki Murakami, I read that one earlier today. Okay. Uh, it's It's kind of fucked up. Do you want me to read that one too? No, let me. Allow me. Please. I'll take a turn. This is from Killing Commendatore, which, by the way, I did mention to you as a book we might want to review. And then you basically told me to fuck off or something. Yeah, I'm not reading any here. Yeah. (laughs) So (laughs) my ejaculation was violent and repeated again and again. Semen poured from me, overflowing her vagina, turning the sheet sticky. There was nothing I could do to make it stop. If it continued, I worried I would be completely emptied out. Yuzu slept deeply through it all without making a sound, her breathing even. Her sex, though, had contracted around mine and would not let go, as if it had an unshakable will of its own and was determined to wring every last drop from my body. Yeah, I don't see a problem with that. What's I don't, <laughs> I just trying to figure out what the... We don't know what context this was in. I mean, Yuzu was sleeping deeply. Listen, the scene before this, might have, Yuzu might have been like, listen... I don't actually need to be awake for any of this. Like, whatever you got to do, do what you got to do, and that's it. <laughs> we don't uh, know. Yeah, Out of context, I mean, it sounds a little rapey. It sounds very rapey, but that's okay. That's, uh, we don't know. Like you said, we don't know. So Yeah, that was, uh, I mean. Hmm. Now, I have a little interesting. So, clicking over to the Literary Reviews article, um, it interestingly james ray responded so uh, uh let's say after days of debate culminating in a meaningful vote the judges finally agreed that frey deserved the award the norwegian model left them unconvinced that the hard withdrawal was too much for them to bear they said in a statement i don't really know what that means james Frey prevailed against a strong all-male shortlist by virtue of the sheer number and length of dubious erotic passages in his book i i'll agree with that the multiple scenes of sustained fantasy in Katarina could have won Frey the award many times over. James Frey said in response, I am deeply honored and humbled to receive this prestigious award. Kudos to all my distinguished fellow finalists. You have all proved provided me with many hours of enjoyable reading over the last year. Wow. Yeah, I mean, you gotta own it. He put it in a book, right? So... Being apologetic about it doesn't help at any at that point, right? Like you just got to embrace it. Uh, yeah, I mean, yeah. Do you remember last year? We talked about the the Liz last year too, um, and it, <laughs> the article mentions my favorite part of the guy that won was uh, I glanced down at the billiard rack of my penis and testicles. Yep. <laughs> Correct. Oh my god. Uh, yeah. There you go. Oh, um, yeah, I don't uh, I don't know. I guess if you're a writer, it would uh, behoove you to look through some of these and decide, uh, you know, how you want to write your sex scenes. So clearly you get some coverage from The Guardian if you're bad enough on it. I mean, that might be worth who knows, dude, you read that passage and somebody might be like, huh, that book sounds all right. Sounds like my kind of thing. So scoundrels here i'll read one more scoundrels the hunt for hans clap by major victor cornwall and major arthur saint john trevelyan empty my tanks i'd beg breathlessly as once more she began drawing me deep inside her pleasure cave <laughs> continue i'm going to i'm sorry <laughs> I, I don't understand how this didn't win Her vaginal ratchet moved in concertina-like waves, slowly chugging my organ as a boa constrictor swallows its prey. Soon I was locked in, balls deep, ready to be ground down by the enameled pepper mill within her. Let's be honest. (laughs) Of the three that we read, that one is the worst, right? Yeah, but remember, uh, they said that was the the number of overall number. Yeah. Yeah. And I anyway. agree, like, we read that whole book and there was nothing but bad sex. 
But maybe the sex was okay, but the way he writes just ruined the sex. That could be... <laughs> it's, it ruined our reading of the sex. I don't think yeah. it that ruined the sex itself. Killed the mood. Yeah, exactly. So, at any rate, um, there's, uh, there's three lists for you guys. Um, obviously, there will be many, many more. I don't think we're doing, like, a best of the year list. I guess that's what I was getting at earlier. Like, we moved past doing that, right? For the oh, most like, part. Well, we're. I think we still do a year in review, but it's much, like, more... Um, like a higher level, not like breaking down the statistics like we used to, but more like, Hey, I'm really proud of this thing that we did. Like that kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah. That's true. Yeah. Hey, did we know that the guardian also is walking around with its hand out like Wikipedia? $3. We got to get $3 in these critical times. Help us protect independent journalism at a time when factual trustworthy reporting is under threat by making a year end gift to support the guardian. $214,000 $214,000 they've raised of their million dollar goal. Uh yeah, so we got to throw in that 3. Yeah, for only for only a dollar a day, you can make sure that the Guardian journalists are fed. Dollar. Oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah, I'm just yeah, I'm yeah, doing the, the the yeah, the TV infomercials with uh, was there like Sally Suzanne Struthers? Or... Yeah. Sally Struthers, right? I don't know. All right, at any rate. I said Suzanne Summers, that's another woman actor or whatever right who's, yes yes whose names both start with us which one did the thigh master because i think that's the one that, that was, was doing the yes All oh right. now we have to look this up it yeah. was suzanne summers did thigh master but i do not believe that she did feed children in another country it would be helpful if i knew what that cause was called right <laughs> let's just use your awesome google skills All right here we go out. uh wikipedia Food and Drug Administration. No, I'm not seeing anything. I think she just did Thigh Master, which, uh, you know, many, many years ago, was uh, that was pre-internet porn. So if you wanted to get off, you could just uh, wait 20 minutes until the commercial came on. Is that... Right? No, the, you had the Sears catalog. That's what everybody... Oh, see, I don't know. The Sears catalog for me, I mean, I grew up in a time where that's where you did like your toy shopping, like your wish list for the year. You'd sit down with the catalog and like circle, circle a bunch of things your parents were never going to buy you. Yeah. yeah. A bunch of dog-eared pages. and I, yeah, I vaguely remember that. Yeah. Uh, all right, I watched well. a lot of Suzanne Summers. I was a big fan of uh, Three's Company. I, I modeled I... I modeled my whole life after Larry, the neighbor. Wait, so did you not get an answer about who was feeding the kids in Africa? Oh, no, I know it's Sally Struthers. Oh. I was looking to see if she also did it. Oh. I thought maybe, like, I wasn't remembering her doing No, I know it's the, Sally Struthers was on um, All in the Family. This all doesn't, I, I don't know. If it's not Suzanne Summers, I gave up interest in this a lot. <laughs> <laughs> well, definitely you picked the one that's better looking of the two. There we go. Yeah, see? It's my mind rewriting history the way that I want it to be. Sally Struthers Save the Ethiopian Children campaign. There you go. Pretty sure that was parodied on South Park at one point before I stopped watching South Park. Um, South Park has uh, has declined significantly in quality. Um, this was sharply contrasted when last week on the same day I saw an episode from season three, and then one mm-hmm. probably from like season ten, and then the current episode. <laughs> and oh my god, man! Can you just see the downhill slide in that show? Um, still worth watching because it's 20 minutes and, you know, there's some funny one-liners and stuff, but overall not, not so good. Yeah. Uh, not to go down a whole South Park rabbit hole or anything, but, um, I think for me, there was a point where it went from them coming up with funny stories to them just commentating whatever was going on at the time, like, like period parodying, like whatever pop news story thing was happening which is kind of their theme now, right? Like, mm-hmm. Oh, for sure. You know, if, if uh, Trump falls down the stairs somewhere, there's going to be a Trump falls down the stairs episode of South Park. And it used to be like the shit with the Loch Ness Monster was some of the funniest shit I ever saw yep. on TV. Yeah. That is, uh, I mean, I, I frequently rank, uh, that would probably be my third favorite now. All right, so let's <laughs> do it. We said we weren't doing our own list. Here's Here my go. list. Here we go. The top five, so four. I'm going to do the top four nope. South Park episodes. Nobody, so I have to do five? Oh. nobody would have ever seen this list coming from us. <laughs> so here we go. In order from four to one. <laughs> Number four is definitely the Loch Ness Monster. Mm-hmm. Okay. 
Number three was the In the Closet episode. Oh, yeah, yeah. With Ar- where Tom Cruise is, is in the closet. Yep, yep. Yeah. Number two is the Rich People Move to South Park mm. episode. Do you know which one I'm talking about? Is that with Will Smith? Yes. Yeah, that's yeah. the one that I saw. I think that's season like three or four. I saw that the other day. They rerun them like in the afternoon or whatever. My favorite episode for one I mean, overall, the episode is good, but there's one moment in an episode that I think transcends comedy, um, especially an animated comedy on television. And it is the episode from probably season two or three where Cartman is riding his tricycle through the mountain and uh, there's a crash. The crash is a, uh, a truck that's taking aborted fetuses to wherever the aborted fetus disposal <laughs> place is. So Cartman sees the opportunity to take the aborted fetuses and sell them for stem cell research. This sounds familiar, yeah. Yeah, and there is a part in there. So there's there's a, a little segment, like a montage, where he's calling around to different um, stem cell clinics um, to try to sell the, 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 the boarded fetuses for stem cell research. And at one point, someone makes him an offer, and the offer is super low. And he's sitting there at his little desk, and he's got a shirt and a tie that doesn't fit right, and his hair's all combed over to the side. You know, he looks like a little businessman. Right. And he says something along the lines of, to, in response to this offer, he says something like, listen here, Steve, I'm just like these fetuses. I wasn't born yesterday. <laughs> I don't think I heard the rest of the episode because I couldn't stop laughing for the like 12 minutes or whatever that episode went on for. It's probably the best, <laughs> best delivered line in context. <laughs> yeah. Really good. I don't remember that episode very well. Oh, but, my God. So um... good. I like the one with the succubus, where Chef dates a succubus. Mm-hmm. Yep. That one's really good. See, that's some of the magic that's missing. When they had a falling out with the chef over his uh, his religious views, Yeah, I think yeah, the show they, went into decline there. Because they made fun of Scientology, right? And he was a Scientologist. Uh, what's his name? Yeah, um, Isaac Hayes. Isaac Hayes. Well, not only they make fun of Scientologists, they expose, like... And not yeah. that you couldn't find that information already, but not just did they poke fun at it. They literally exposed and then amplified like the highest levels of Scientology or the beliefs at the highest levels of Scientology. So, yeah, to be fair, it's pretty ridiculous. Sorry if you're a Scientologist and listening, but I mean, it's hard not to make fun of. Um, yeah, I'm not sorry. Yeah. yeah. So, um, yeah, it's South Park. Yeah, and that's the thing. Like, I think they started out with something great. And um, at one point, something hit, and it took him in a different direction. And I think it was around, like, the Saddam Hussein getting found in a spider hole, kind of like Wizard of Oz shit they did or something. Mm -hmm. I don't remember. But, like, there was a moment where they definitely just decided, well, this is the road we're going down. And it went away from these, like, fantastical narratives to just, like, uh, exaggerations of, you know, the, you know, feel like the the whatever's going on today kind of thing Mm -hmm. well it's funny you said that so i'll use the the trump falls down the stairs or whatever you said earlier the thing that has been amazing to me about them for not since the very beginning but probably around like the fourth or fifth season is how quickly they move on stuff like this as a matter of fact i can tell you when i first noticed it um bush um gore the hanging chads yeah yeah like that happened on a Tuesday, and I feel yeah, like day, yeah, they yeah. had an episode come out on a Friday, and they had a whole thing written out about kindergartners having to vote for class president that that mimicked the election that was going on from like four days before that. Yep. Like that's how fast they were, and I mean, I realize that they produce it's animation, and you, you know, what I mean, so I get it. Like they don't have to assemble a cast or anything, but yeah, holy sets. shit, yeah. they move quick. Usually to see something like that that's commentary on a current event, you have to wait weeks, months in some cases. But, man, those motherfuckers were like, we are rewriting half the episode right now so well, we can get you, it up this week. Were you aware they did a, there was a documentary that was made about them and they, like they specifically addressed like what their process is to make it so that they're so timely? No, no, I did not. Yeah. I did not. I mean, I figured they they would probably been asked about it, but I was not aware of of an actual. I don't remember the name of the documentary. I'm not gonna look it up. But like, yeah, if you're interested, like they go through their whole process and stuff, and it's actually it was pretty interesting. And this was like, I watched it even after I stopped caring about South Park. So, um, that was yeah. They they yeah. I mean, 
I'm, I'm not saying it on like the like the dudes anymore. Like obviously they're talented and they they have a way of like saying the most offensive thing in a way where like people will be offended, but for the most part, people just talk about it, which is is especially in this day and age difficult to do because like if you say anything that's not on script you know so you know you have to say an apology or or take it down or whatever so um that it's nice that they have the ability to to still push the envelope what is it 25 years later what season yeah. are they on 20 something 20th yeah. maybe yeah it's been yeah, it's probably been 20 years since they, they debuted. I remember where I was when I first saw, like, the first six episodes were out and someone handed me a VHS tape. They had taped all of them and said, you need to see this. Oh, dude, I, I like, tuned in for the, the debut episode. Like, oh, nice. Yeah. On, the, on the night it aired. Yeah. I had a, a co-worker. He just he walked into work and he said, dude, I know you have no idea what this is. I want you to watch. Just watch, like, the first two. And then I was I was hooked for years. So, anyway... That's uh that's South Park. Yeah, yeah, that's our yeah. That's, that's our list. Twenty eighteen, um, list is uh South four best South Park episodes. Strongly encourage people to find those episodes and watch them if you haven't already. Well, that was your list. I didn't I didn't do oh. a list because I don't I, I couldn't I'd have to like go back and look at the names of episodes <laughs> yeah. and, to remember. Yep. This has been so long. Here's another great one where they uh they were I don't know are they playing like a Dungeons and Dragons type game but through the through and I know they repeat it in some other episodes but through the whole episode we see them in their like warrior costumes mm. yeah but Cartman has the power of invisibility in the game they're playing and he doesn't understand it doesn't work in real life so there's a naked little Cartman like trying to that sounds familiar. sneak across yeah. the stage <laughs> just just another great moment at any rate <laughs> Um, South Park, there we go. We talked about a show it's 20 years old. I feel like some uh, friends I have on uh, social media who you know. Really? They're like guys, <laughs> guys. You have to watch the. I just started watching The Wire. Oh my god! Uh, a, f- a friend of the podcast, uh, John, that I've uh, talked about in the past, uh, has been pushing me to watch Breaking Bad, um, and I, I made a soft commitment to watch Breaking Bad. Okay, I um, want you to make a second commitment. I want you every episode to, that you watch Breaking Bad to mention that you're watching it and talk yeah. about like how amazing the episode is for every single one that you watch. Can't wait to see what happens next episode. I'm like all over social media with it. <laughs> yep. They're like, yeah, he made The Walking Dead. Like, have you heard that mm-hmm. uh, that theory? Yes. Yes, I did. Yeah. Yep. So whatever. Yeah. So right. if I if I watch Breaking Bad, I am not going to say it to anybody. I'm just going to experience <laughs> it and move on with my fucking life. I don't know how you do it, Rob. I don't know how you do it. <laughs> Hey, I had another thing that came up today that kind of irked me a little bit. Maybe I'm reading this wrong. By reading, I mean my take on it, not that I'm actually reading something. There's lots of things I read wrong. Tune in next week's episode for, <laughs> for more on that. Um, so. so I was listening to a – I don't want to say it was a newscast because it wasn't a newscast. It was one of those shows where there's like a host that talks about things and has like guests on. So it's not like I, I was watching like the you know NBC Nightly News or whatever. And – I, it's something I've heard before, but tonight it struck me as particularly wrong. So I started thinking, this is something along the lines of what the host said, right? Like, all right, on tonight's episode, we're going to talk about um, A, B, and C that went on today. We've also got, you know, a guest, the so-and-so Rob's going to come on and talk about this other thing that's been happening in the news. And then later, we'll react to thing Z that happened today. And I thought that, like... Saying that you were going to react to something. So this happens a lot. I mean, I see it. There's obviously there's reaction videos and stuff on YouTube. But actually stating that you're going to react to something seems like something you shouldn't be able to do, right? Like a reaction should be something that's instantaneous that happens. Yeah, it's weird. Well, I, I agree. So I did. I just it was the way it was phrased. I know I've heard it plenty of times before because it didn't strike me as weird that he said it. I was just actually listening and I was like that's a weird thing to say so later in this uh, towards the end of this episode uh, you're going you're gonna to hear us react to something that we read in an article on vulture.com like it, it's just a weird I don't know it, it bugged me enough that I, I felt it mentioned merited mention uh, yes and so they shouldn't say that because it sounds weird to the listener 
but like from their perspective, they're just playing something they recorded before. So obviously, like it makes sense to say, "Hey, we're going to react to this thing" because I already did the reaction. I'm guessing. No, because what would happen is like three se- three segments into the show, they'd be like, "All right." Um, this thing happened. Trump fell down the stairs today. To react to that, I have Rob. Rob, tell us about this fall. Tell us, tell us what you thought when you saw him fall down these stairs today. I you, you know what I mean? Like that oh, type I thought of, you wanted well, my reactions. <laughs> right, but you, you get what I'm saying. Like yeah. it's it's not like a you know we were live earlier and this thing right, happened. That's just totally you know? unforgivable. Yeah, yeah, it's terrible, and I don't know why people do it because they suck for the most part. Um, I mean, it's, that could be one of the reasons. Well, I mean, we we were talking recently. I I think that uh, um, t- like this was a TV thing, or you were listening to something. Um, I was listening to something that's on TV. All right, so it's a TV. I was, thing. I was just a serious. It's a simulcast. Yeah. So uh, I, I I we were talking. I think it was in the previous episode about Frank Bill being interviewed on, on live TV. And I, I really had a lot of problems with the way it went down. I think that TV just is for a different level of brain maybe than, you know, yeah. than we well, have first. Well, thanks. I think that's, yeah, <laughs> it, it's, it's a medium that's, that's like, that hurts. it. It's hurt by its own medium. So, you watch a show, it's it's an hour long, right? So something where Frank Bill would be interviewed or if you're watching, I don't know, pick whichever CNN anchor has a show or Fox anchor has a show or whatever, right? It's an hour long show. It's 42 minutes after commercials on average, okay? Yeah. And it's broken up into segments. So essentially, if you're my guest and I'm, uh, I'm running the Livius Nedden show on CNN and I have Rob on, you essentially are going to get five minutes. And in that five minutes, you have to be able to clearly communicate a fully formed thought or point. That's all you have. And I'm not going to give you five minutes because I'm the host of the fucking show. So I'm going to interject with my thoughts and opinions for at least two and a half to three minutes of that, depending on how vain I am, which leaves you the guest two minutes to react. I'm finger air quotes, right? Um, to it. So, I mean, it's terrible. If you listen to a podcast like this and we have a guest on, there's no time limit to how long they can talk about whatever question we asked. And and if, if you're an astute listener, you've noticed sometimes there have been brutally short answers that we've had to prod with follow-ups. Sometimes we have a guest where we're like, so tell us about this book. And Rob and I can mute ourselves. Rob gets up and gets a beer. I vape. Not angrily. I vape, you know, while I'm listening. <laughs> Contentedly. <clears throat> Yeah, but, you know, and they'll go on for three minutes. That's more time for one answer than they're allowed on, on any type of, like, TV, especially, like, a news program. I guess we – I mean, Oprah's not on anymore, but Oprah would do the hour-long guest, right? So they'd get 40-ish minutes to, to talk about their stuff. So, I mean, YouTube and podcast are definitely a different uh, – a very different medium based on – you know, the, yeah. the fact that there's no time limit or your time limit is all kind of dedicated – to one person over the course of your your podcast so i'm spoiled is what you're saying i'm saying that there's no way we could possibly do this in a time constrained format where your producer's going listen guys guys you're 30 seconds over on talking about the bad sex awards no you can't read it just one more like someone would be saying that in your ear the whole time because you have to go to commercial break jesus no one would ever know anything about my childhood exactly <laughs> Rob, you'd just be a pretty, you'd be a pretty face. You wouldn't be a fully formed human being the way we know and love you. Oh my God! No one would know about anything about my childhood. It's, I don't know what but to say about that. But that being said, if anybody's listening from a major broadcast network, we're willing to talk. So yeah, to the to the prescribed amount of time. <laughs> exactly. So, uh, uh, you know what hey, keeps us off what? off selling out to the man, right? What's Patreon that? contributors. Oh yeah. Oh, was I supposed to react to that in a specific way? Yes. And uh, right after this, we're gonna, Rob is going to react to my saying <laughs> Patreon contributors. Rob, what's your reaction? Um, I fucking love our Patreon contributors. Um, they make all of this possible, and I got nothing. I don't know what you're expecting out of me for this. You <laughs> totally ambushed me. <laughs> I did. All I was saying is that if people continue to contribute to Patreon or if you're not contributing, there's always you can always start right now, um, yeah. at least a dollar a month 
we will be eternally grateful. There will be spoiler talk at any rate. We're trying to get our Patreon contributions up a little bit <laughs> is really what this is. That's how bad for the we are. Cost I don't even have anything to say about of, it. For the cost of only one cup of coffee per month, you could support one of your favorite podcasts and probably have enough left over to support this one too. Patreon.com slash book. Here's, here's the thing I'll say about like Patreon has like the, the tiers and like we give you early access and you get spoiler uh, talk. And then there's like the other tiers where you can choose a book and stuff like that. But like, well, I th- I guess the unadvertised thing about us is that like if we if like if you're a patron like the level that like the the lengths we'll go to um to talk about you to like you know send you stuff is 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 it doesn't take a lot to get us to like really love you and interact with you so um there's really not a tier for like our unending gratitude but um uh, you know and I don't want to say that kind of like but we'll send stuff to people randomly and things like that if we just like if we feel like hey man these people are really supporting us and they deserve something for it like we we do our best to return that um you know that with with our gratitude so yeah maybe the the model of patreon just doesn't fit for our kind of sporadic um approach to to thanks or or rewards don't let what rob just said deter you Patreon.com slash booked. It should encourage you because we probably do more than we should for the people who like, we really feel like, Oh man, these guys are, these guys are real, like tried and true supporters. Love it. Yeah. We have one more story and Rob is, uh, much more well informed to talk about this one. Um, uh, here with reaction to that will be me after Rob tells you about this. All right, the first thing I want to say is that I'm proud to say that I spelled plagiarism right. I was I was concerned I wasn't going to spell plagiarism the right way, but I did. Yeah, I you know what? I probably wouldn't have put that i in there. Yeah. Probably would have been plagiarism. Plagiarism, way which different. is probably which is probably like a a condition that you get like yeah. if you don't, I don't know, like if you don't stand up often enough during a day like ah, I've got the plagiarism. We'll just go sit down for a while. Yeah. So plagiarism, uh, I, I I was scrolling through Twitter and some author retweeted something about plagiarism. And I always love l- learning about what kind of dipshit got caught plagiarizing someone. So I followed the thread and I read about it and stuff. And, and, and I'll, I'll try, I'll do my best to sum this up. This is something that happened very recently. This article is from to, today, like this afternoon. And I saw these tweets, I think, last night. So this is something that's very, very recent. Um... Uh, it was someone had retweeted uh, an author named Rachel McKibbins, who is a is a poet. So this is about poetry, Livius. Go on, go on. <laughs> and uh, she had a great. Uh, um, I wish I had the tweet in front of me, but uh, the she the Rachel McKibbins one that caught my eye was. Um, Something that's, uh, you know, something I wrote that someone stole from me got a, nominated for some award. I hope we win or something like that. And I was like, all right, that's funny. I got to check out what's going on. Anyway, uh, there's a young poet named Ailey O'Toole who uh, published, you know, she's a newer writer who published some poetry and stuff and had a had an upcoming like chap book, you know, like that was on the verge of coming out. Anyway, she she got a push cart nomination for a poem called gun metal. And, um, in that poem, she straight up lifted lines or kind of paraphrased or rewrote, like changed some wording around, um, from a poem by Rachel McGibbons. And, uh, at one point, the strange thing is, so this alio tool, uh, girl had reached out to McGibbons to say, Hey, I didn't steal your words. Um, but I, like I was inspired by them or, you know, whatever, like that kind of thing. And I thought that we could start up a discussion about our, how our writing kind of works together or something like that. And so that's how, that's how this, this Rachel McGibbons found out that this girl stole her, po- like her poetry. I'm so glad the, the whole time here, I'm going to react to what Rob just said. Um, <laughs> The whole time I kept thinking, like, 
how the fuck does somebody know if somebody plagiarized poetry? That means someone has to fucking read it. Yes. <laughs> like, I literally could probably take fuck. I could publish a book of fucking poems that I took completely off the fucking Internet and out of other books. How long do you think before somebody would be like, holy shit, I've read this poetry book. And I think it's the same poem that's in another poetry book. That means someone read two fucking poetry books. Yeah, the odds of that are astronomical. <laughs> well, that's what I'm fucking saying. So, I mean, obviously, because this Alio tool um, got nominated for a pushcart, was like, oh, shit, this might get out. I should probably get ahead of this. Um, nobody would have known, Ailey. Nobody would have fucking known. You would have won a goddamn pushcart award, whatever the fuck that is. And... uh that no one would have ever known because nobody read your book. <sighs> yeah. Um, it gets better, though. Um, this... Oh, do tell, because that would, so far it's been fascinating. So uh, then, so there's a couple of things. So I'm going to tell you the, the less interesting thing, and I'm going to go to the more interesting thing. Uh, this Rachel McGibbons then went and investigated this poetry, and in reading that poetry, recognized lines from other people's poetry. Mm, that's sketchy because that's going against my theory <laughs> so but if you're a poet i'm guessing maybe you you read mm. more poetry than like no mm. all right anyway. all right let's let, let me just say let's say that you make scat videos you know what a scat video is where you like bibbity bobbity that kind of shit <laughs> no, God, no. like scat singing is that what you're talking about <laughs> that's awesome i i'm gonna make a video of you scat singing because that's far more interesting than what i was gonna say diggity bobbit of whatever the fuck that was um like uh no, what's his name video uh... where like people defecate on other people <laughs> now do you think the person who makes so, that so not like cab calloway is is what you're saying i'm not sure if Cab Calloway made the type of videos I'm talking about, it's <laughs> possible. <laughs> so I don't want to. I don't want to just say no and then have someone be like, "Here's a link." Fucking found out that you're fucking not, not investigating what you're fucking reporting here, buddy. <laughs> so if you make videos where you defecate on other people or are defecated on, I guess it works both ways. Do you think you're out there watching other videos that are equally as repulsive? Uh, I would. Yes. Yeah. I think you. I think you are. Uh, I don't. I see. I don't know, man. Just because someone writes poetry doesn't mean that they read it. That's that's all I'm saying. Because let's face it, I'm going to read to you a line. I don't even know what this is, but it looks like it's in the format. So I don't even know who this is. Ramshackle girl spitting teeth in the sink. I trace the foreign topography of my body, find God in my skin. Who reads that shit? Nominate this for some of the worst sex stuff. Let's 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 see if we can get Katerina removed wow. and replaced by this. I feel like we really struck a nerve with you here. Yeah, poetry always does it, man. Um, would it be better. Is there sci-fi poetry? Because that would really do. It. <laughs> uh, yeah, probably there is. Here, um, here's here's my here's my goddamn here's my my sci-fi poem. I'm doing this completely off the top of my head, right? Star spangled, aliens spitting onto my spaceship. <laughs> I fly through a supernova and find God in the goddamn. I was gonna say Astros, but that's probably not a thing. That's like a <laughs> game, right? But close enough. There you go. I just did fucking poetry. Pushcart nominated poetry heading my way. Oh my god. Uh can't get over Cab Calloway doing scad videos. <laughs> right. That guy's that guy's a singer, I'll die take it, right? Is that Yeah. Did you ever watch yeah. Blues Brothers? No. Oh my oh, Jesus Christ. We, I was I was sort of I don't want to say force fed Blues Brothers because I, I, I just tuned out, right? In seventh grade, my art teacher thought we should watch Blues Brothers. Because he is an extra in it. That's what you do when you're a teacher. I hated that motherfucker. All right. So it, not, so wait, extras in Blues Brothers, or could they be extras in anything like that? Hold on. Take on me just started playing. Well, I was going to say, I know that song. <laughs> that, that I love that video. No, I'm trying to find the right song. I was listening to Take on Me earlier today, of course. 
what's going on? I, I lost the thread of our conversation. We're going to play Cap Calloway. I was saying that our teachers, can they be extras in just like comedy movies made in Chicago or can they be extras in scat videos too? <laughs> hey, if you go to my high school, I wouldn't be surprised if it was the latter. There you go. All right, so something like something like this. Hang on, it's gonna to get to the thing in a minute. You hear that? Oh, I heard it. Yeah, like that's the scat. That's the scat. That's scat where you just kind of go. Billy, billy. You're like someone making fucking noises. When uh, when I'm around like two year olds, I make sounds like that at them. <laughs> You've been scatting way more than you thought. Is, is oh what I'm my god. So you're saying that I could have a career just fucking making noises with yeah. music behind me you, like that? You, you find a, a guitarist and a drummer and, and like a bass player and just stand at the microphone and just babble shit. That's a whole that career. Would probably, that would probably pay a lot more than my Pushcart nominated sci-fi poem. I don't know. It was good up until that last line. Yeah, I have to, I have to work <laughs> on it a little bit. So I guess before, so I, there's, we haven't got to the best part of this, uh, this O'Toole fiasco. Mm-hmm. Are you ready for this? Do are continue, you, please. You're, are you, do you happen to be looking at the article link? That I, I am. All right. I am. So she took this girl, Ali O'Toole, Ali O'Toole uh, took words that she stole from uh, Rachel McGibbons and had them very poorly tattooed onto her arm. <laughs> so, uh, and, and there's, so the original, the McGibbons lines are, Hell Spangled Girl Spitting Teeth Into the Sink. And the O'Toole uh, stolen line is ramshackle girl spitting teeth in the sink. So uh, ramshackle girl spitting teeth in the sink is the words that she had tattooed on her arm. And it looks like I fucking drew it with a Sharpie. Dude, she may have gotten that in prison. We don't know. For a prison (laughs) tattoo, it's not bad. It would be okay for a prison tattoo. Oh, I'm pretty sure she's standing in a Starbucks when the picture's taken. So, Yeah, that looks like a... Or like a college, like whatever, yeah. Where you know cafeteria place or something like that. Yeah, I mean, clearly this was. I mean, I, I read the the two passages that are highlighted here, and they're literally, um, they're like, <clears throat> they're like someone misquoting something, like doing it from memory. Yeah, paraphrasing. <laughs> so, yeah, 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 yeah. So, yeah. yeah. Wow. Oh, and and then so this is what uh, Ali O'Toole s- sent to McGibbons. I hope you can understand it was not my intention to pass your work off as my own, and I am deeply ashamed of this mistake. I'm paraphrasing you. I had hoped to put our poems into conversation with each other and go on to explore new terrain opened up for me by your work. I am deeply ashamed of this mistake I made, the mistake I made, and hope you can accept my sincerest apologies. On Twitter, McGibbons responded with a succinct, Bitch, I don't. (laughs) Good job. That's poetic. Hey, I think, um, scroll back up to the picture. Does it just say racist on her shirt? It does say racist. <laughs> All right. Well, there you go. I think everyone's missing the point here. <laughs> is that this is less about that stupid tattoo and the fact that it just says racist on her shirt. Oh, there you go. So, uh, plagiarism is definitely something that comes up from time to time. This, I thought, was pretty pretty entertaining, and, and I wanted to force you to talk about poetry, so... Um... <clears throat> Maybe, I mean, I, I may have, maybe if no one ever hears this episode, or if someone doesn't hear this episode, maybe someone can fuck, come on and explain poetry to me. Like, maybe I'm just fucking doing it wrong, man. When you read poetry? Yeah. I mean, literally, it's like, I'm, I've got like six sentences, and if I break up the spacing kind of funny, it's a poem. That's the closest I've got to this. Like, like that's, <laughs> am I, is it something more than that? Is this something someone can explain to me? Someone can explain it to you. It's not going to be me. Although, hmm. I don't know if you know this about me. I have a published poem. Oh, I know. Okay. I know. All right. All right. Next week. I know I keep saying this, but next week, Demon Theory, Stephen Graham Jones. Um, Rob is halfway through the book. Mm-hmm. I'm not sure what percentage of the book I'm through because of um, footnotes being at the end and stuff, but I am uh, part two of three, so I'll assume I'm 66. percent You're um, you're about 75. If I if I uh, you're probably about yeah you're you're right you're probably about 70. percent 
Yep. So um, we'll be joined by Misty Bennett, who will be reviewing uh, this book with us. This was her Patreon pick. That'll be our episode next week. Um, the following week, I think we'll be doing Les Edgerton's book, and then we'll have a holiday episode. Now, so that'll here just a little public shaming for Livius. So the holiday episode every year we do a gift exchange. Um, we've already I've already got a fucking wrapped present from Jesse because he probably bought it back in February. Yeah. Very, yeah. very proud to say all my shopping's done. That look, there are two things that hurt me uh, more than anything about this podcast. It's when a Rob reads a book, finishes a book before I do. It's <laughs> happened like six times in the history of the podcast. <laughs> and never has it happened that Rob had his gift shopping done before I did not once. So um, I'm uh, I'm a little behind. I'm either a little behind or you're way ahead. I'm pretty sure you're way ahead. Yeah. Like like this isn't a lapse on my part. I think there's some kind of weird, like you drank too much coffee one day. And we're like, I'm going to fucking get some shit done. I'm going to get this shopping done and whatever. So, yeah, I don't know where Misty's at. I think Misty has not um, commented. So yeah, I'm guessing her and I are silence. in the same boat. Yeah. yeah. So I'm, uh, I'm, I'm working through some ideas this week for uh, for holiday gifts for you guys. Um, that episode will be broadcast live on Facebook, I believe. And then you guys will hear audio um, here. But if you, you know, if you wait to listen to it here, you're going to miss um, our beautiful faces um, and the, the gift exchange on video. So there'll probably be like some eggnog drinking. Oh, yeah. I saw some. When egg- I say oh. that, I oh. bought some eggnog specifically for oh. it sitting in my fridge. So. I was at Target and I was like, oh, I got to get some of that eggnog. Throw some whiskey in there. Fuck yeah. Oh, you know they have it pre-made with liquor in it, right? Yeah, but not my whiskey. This is true. Yeah, I don't have whiskey, so I just bought the stuff that's already liquored up. So yeah, yeah. so that that'll be a lot of fun. But that's going to be your next uh, your next three episodes from us. All right, that's going to wrap it up on the list of people that are saying good night. I'm number one, Rob Olson. Number two, Livia Snedden. Keep reading.